Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, you know, I saw guys wearing Hawaiian shirts last week, so I thought, why not? <laughs> We're summertime here in Living Waters. Uh, welcome to any vi visitors and guests uh, who are here with us this day. We're glad you could be with us this day God has made. Um, we're moving stuff from our house um, up in Breckenridge to Sauk Rapids on Tuesday. So uh, now we're just catching up with the rest of our lives. Stephanie and I are looking forward to being um, in one spot. I know she's here somewhere out there. <laughs> there she is. And uh, so that'll be this week. Now we're really looking forward to that uh, come, coming up now. Uh, so looking at the uh, upcoming events, Vacation Bible School. July 18th through the 21st, uh, we've got registration is open. Uh, we reserved 10 spots for kids from Living Waters. Uh, to, as a, and so get signed up. V VBS is coming. Luther Crest Bible Camp Counselors, lunch, um, camperships. I mean, it's all good. Uh, we, and uh, so there's camperships or scholarships available uh, for that. And uh, we need some volunteers if you'd like to volunteer with it. It's got a long-standing partnership between Salem and uh, Living Waters, as I understand it. And uh, so that's always, VBS is always just a highlight. Let us know um, if you'd like to help. Confirmation students, you get 20 points for helping out, as I understand it. All right. And even if you bring a friend, you'll get points uh, to help out with VBS. I met one of the pastors from Salem uh, this last week too and so um, I, I think that sounds like just an awesome time so 90 Riverside Drive Southeast at Salem coming up those days 18th 24th 21st get the word out uh, let, let everybody know let's see here uh, oh also you can email Kirsten right it's not Kirsten it's Kirsten so gotcha back there so wait everybody knows Kirsten probably <laughs> Uh, let her know when we get those guys signed up. It'll be a great week. We also need folks uh, to help with the parking for the food fest. Food, one of my favorite things. Um, if you'd like to help uh, this also, we can send that around. Uh, to, I think we've got some good helpers, um, but we're sending those clipboards all uh, around. So let's see. And we thank our musicians today uh, for, for leading us. Uh, you might want to stop and visit the new office coordinator, uh, Ellery Prentice, who just started this last week. Uh, she'll be here in the mornings, uh, usually uh, at that time. And also one last thing, we, we welcome into God's family, uh, Lana, uh, who is being baptized today. Uh, so it's a, it's a big day for Lana and her family. So, okay. And this is, gotcha, and this is to, to welcome Lana into God's family. Uh, everybody kind of sign, give her a message of um, encouragement and peace and love in baptism into, into Christ. Any other announcements this morning? If not, we, uh, we begin by singing our opening song, You Say.
Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. We sing our Kyrie. We're going to sing one verse um, each week. This week it's verse one. seek the face of our God, the creator of wind and rain, feel an ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us and this world. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God of overflowing grace, we come to you with repentant hearts. Forgive us for shallow thankfulness. Forgive us for passing by the ones in need. Forgive us for setting our hopes on fleeting treasures. Forgive us our neglect and thoughtlessness. Bring us home from the wilderness of sin and strengthen us to serve you in all that we do and say. Through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. Amen. There is joy in heaven over every sinner who repents by the grace of God in Christ who gave himself up for us all. Our sins are forgiven and we are made free. Rejoice with one another. We are home in God's mercy now and forever. Amen. Amen. Remembering that in baptism we are made children of God, marked with the cross of Christ forever and set free to love one another. Please make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Invite any kids who are here to come on up as we sing Awesome God.
Good morning. All right. What do I have here today? An We've got an apple. All right. There's more kids out there, too. I know you guys see it. We're all children of God, too, right? What are the parts of an apple? Like if I were to cut the apple in half, what are you going to see? A cut apple. A cut apple. <laughs> yep. Well, what's in the cut apple? Like, there's like parts of it. What's on the outside of the apple? Skin. The skin of the apple. Yeah. It's a red part. And then what about on the inside? What do we call that? Isn't that amazing? An apple. What's that part called? In the middle. When you're done eating that whole thing, it starts with a C. Apple core. All right. Apple core. And then this, I don't really know what we call that, the pulp, the apple part that we eat. But yet, it's all one apple. All right. Today is Trinity Sunday. Uh, we call it Trinity Sunday. Um, and I'm kind of talking about that with this apple. What are some other words that have Trinity in it? You heard, yeah, you heard of, is there another word that starts with T-R-I? Yeah. Trinity Church, sometimes the name of a church. How about this thing? You, you ride it sometimes, you ride it around town, well, or your neighborhood, or the sidewalk anyway. It's got three wheels. What do you call it? You, 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 with a pedal? Tricycle. Tricycle. There's the word tri in there, too. Um, when there's three, Trinity means three. So, like three in one. Three in one. And so, God um, is three. In one, so that's what we we're just kind of talking about Trinity a little bit. Um, the way we understand God is God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and so that's Trinity, the Triune God. Um, so just be thinking about that. God is an awesome God, amazing. Trying to understand how awesome God is, is sometimes we can't really get it all in a day, you know. But some of these things help us to think about how awesome God is. Well, let's pray. Gracious God, appear to me. Gracious God, thank you, thank you. That, you that you are the Trinity, and you are awesome. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. We sing the holly, holly, holly. gospel for this day is from John <clears throat> chapter 16 verses 12 to 15. Jesus said, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I guess I can see you better from here. So, one thing you find out is uh, 
I'm sort of, my thermostat is made for the North Sea, so usually I'm a few degrees hotter than everybody else, but that's just the way it is. I like sitting over there because you're by the fans. It's pretty nice. Today is the first Sunday uh, after Pentecost, as we call it, in the church year. It's also Trinity Sunday, um, and once a year in the church year, we think about the mystery of the Holy Trinity, the triune God, how God is three persons and yet one God. I remember one uh, confirmation student, uh, when I started out as a young pastor some years ago, who had a good point in a confirmation class. He said, if God is God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, when Jesus came down to earth, who kept the, kept the planets and everything running? And I thought, oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> you know, it was just an honest question. I don't recall my exact uh, attempt at an answer, but I may have considered explaining how God can do things that we can't imagine. Or I may have said that maybe God put the planets on autopilot, cosmic autopilot for a while. I didn't know the one that I resorted to when I was uh, raising my own kids, and that is, go ask your mother. <laughs> <laughs> or I may have resorted to one of my favorites I learned from my internship supervisor um, in Boise, Idaho, when he said, you have just asked an unanswerable question. That one works for a lot of things. There are a couple texts today uh, we're going to look at. In John 16, Jesus tells his disciples that the spirit of truth will come and will guide us into all the truth. The spirit, he says, will take what is his and declare it to his, his disciples, his followers, who would include us today. And he says that what his father has is his, and he says he will take what is mine and declare it to you, the Spirit will. And it's from verses like that one from John where people first started to hear about uh, who we call today the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they all work together as three in one, three in one God. In Jesus' great commission, he sends his disciples out, and that's at, found at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 28. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and to teach what Jesus taught. We have these awesome words about the Trinity, like from Paul, from Ephesians, where Paul says, I pray that you have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Kind of blows your mind. And that's the kind of day that Trinity Sunday is. Kind of a blow our mind kind of day about contemplating the nature of God, who God is. There's this big plot in the Bible, a uh, main story, that old, old story. The main story is God's love for you, unconditional, undying love for all God's children. And then, then there's this subplot, and that is, I would say, of the Trinity, um, how God comes to speak to people through God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And some of you might be here today, as many have uh, Christ followers through history, saying, you know, I don't know if I'm totally ever going to get this for sure, this Trinity thing. Here's it. Here's the thing. Fear the person who says they can. <laughs> totally understand the Trinity. Even Martin Luther said that he, would live, he could live his whole life and maybe not quite comprehend the Apostles' Creed. For the one who has never really understood completely the Trinity, God says... The main thing is I want you to know me in a whole new way. There have been some, uh, there have been some pretty great minds throughout history that have tried to uh, get their heads around this concept. Uh, greater minds than mine, anyway, that's for sure. And they've used analogies to try and help us understand the nature of the Trinity. Um, there's, there are different 
Things like the, the, the clover leaf from Augustine. Uh, probably the clover leaf uh, is up there. Oh, the, um, be right with you. You got to give the slide guys your cues. <laughs> New things to learn in a church. They, of course, you got to do that every church, but they probably appreciate that. So, um, Augustine used the, the image of the clover leaf um, to talk about God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God and yet three different persons. And that was a, a teaching way of, of helping people understand God. Walter Casper, professor of Catholic theology at Tübingen University, German, Germany, quotes Anselm of Canterbury, um, who was in England in the 12th century, who defined God as id quo maius cogitare nequit, or that than which nothing greater can be thought. German theologian, uh, Paul Tillich, quoted by Time Magazine all the time uh, back in his day, taught at Union Theological Seminary in New York uh, in 33 and later, later on at Harvard. This is a, a Tillichian uh, sentence, and I, the, I try to get my mind around this, but he says, existential and finite life is led by the Spirit into greater inhesion in the vitalities of the life of the Trinity as the ground of life. Whoa. <laughs> Dr. Francis Collins, um, who is the author of the, of the Human Genome Project, the main guy in charge, where they're mapping out the DNA of human beings, uh, he's a, a devout Christian. A lot of scientists are, are believers in God. People might not always understand that. And um, he had this uh, experience of God when he, when he was uh, younger, where he saw this huge waterfall frozen waterfall with three mighty pillars, columns of frozen water, and reminded him of the Trinity. And that was a way of experience of God that got him on a track of coming back to his childhood faith and just growing deeper and deeper in that mystery because of the powerful uh, image of that. People have experiences of God in different ways that can shed light on the, this concept of the Trinity and how the Spirit guides people into truth. Some people throughout history have gotten off the tracks, um, and, and then they, they call it heresy or whatever it's called. It's when theology kind of goes, goes awry, and uh, they go choo-chooing off the tracks, like the Gnostics of the 3rd and 4th century who somehow taught that we were all a little bit of God, and we become uh, God ourselves, but that Jesus himself wasn't um, of the same nature of God, but was created as a, as a human, or that he was God. Jesus uh, was, was uh, a, a human being, but not really affected by the same things that you and I have. And you have to have this secret knowledge so that we can become God ourselves. That, but that's really not found in the scriptures. In Arianism, uh, in Egypt in the fourth century, um, they, they, this, there was the same idea that Jesus was just a human being, or a different kind of idea that Jesus was a human being. And they got wandered off from uh, Trinitarian teaching. So throughout history, sometimes people have gotten a little off the tracks about uh, teaching about the Trinity. But the Bible's really clear that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are three distinct persons, one God. In Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, uh, we read, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the Spirit of God, it says, was hovering over the face of the earth. So right there, you've got two members of the Trinity, God the Creator and God the Holy Spirit. John 1.1 1, 1, uh, talks about, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word became human and lived among us here on this earth. And that's Jesus, the second member of the Trinity. There's John 10.30, where Jesus says, The Father and I are one. You know, there are all these different verses that hint to that and help us to understand um, how God, Father, and Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all God. One God, three different persons. But sometimes, where's my tripod? There we go. People get kind of off balance and emphasize one member of the Trinity more than the other. And then that can lead to 
not always a balanced understanding of faith. Um, for instance, if our understanding of God is only focused on God as creator, you know, like say one of these legs of the tripod, then we might sort of neglect the idea of God as Son, or God as Holy Spirit, and, and not remember how God has come to teach us and to be with us and empower us, but just focus on the earth. If we focus um, only on God, the, the Son, or, you know, and just say, sometimes people get into the Christian faith and they'll say, it's just about me and Jesus and my faith in Jesus, they might forget about the creation and how important and blessed that is to God as God has created this incredible earth and wants us to care for it. So then we'd forget about God the creator as, uh, to some extent. Or if we not emphasize God the Holy Spirit, we might miss out on the power that's available to us um, through God's presence in the Spirit. But a balanced faith has this understanding of the full nature of God. It's kind of a cool um, description there. <clears throat> with, the, with the comprehensive understanding and a balanced view of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we just... Uh, it's, it's, a better, uh, it's a better balance, you could say, of, of faith. Sometimes uh, people describe a disaster that might happen, like a, a hurricane or maybe riots or whatever, and they're trying to understand where is God in this. And uh, then all of a sudden people show up the next day to help in carloads, you know, to help look for God in the helpers. <laughs> uh, but in a, in a case like that, what you could say is that God the Creator sends people as the body of Christ, as Jesus, to help. And they're empowered and helped by the power of the Holy Spirit in responding to this disaster. So that's how we understand that God shows up in this world, um, doing good through God's people, through the Holy Spirit, um, and taking care of the world. Anyway, to understand our triune God, the Spirit of God enlightens us so we can grow in our faith. God wants us to understand the full nature of God's essence so we can know in our hearts who God really is. And we'll never really maybe understand God completely in this life, but Jesus wants us to know him as fully as possible because he wants us to know it can give us this inner strength and deepen our love for God and each other. We need that state. So, another analogy real quick. People will get to know each other real well. Maybe they, um, people will say before they're married that they never really understood how two can be, become one. Um, I get that somewhat. Even uh, when apart, even after being married for a while, I don't completely understand that mystery. But as in relationship with God, it starts to become clear over time. And God says, do you want, me to be, uh, want to know me in a whole new way, a way that can answer that question of who are you, God, and who am I that you would love me so incredibly much? Well, created by God, baptized and sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ forever. Make room in your heart for the fullness of God as the Spirit takes what is Jesus and declares it to you. May even your unanswerable questions be answered. May you now know God more and let your faith be full. To God be the glory now and forever. Amen. We sing now the song of the day. Let's sing. How great is our God.
this time invite the family and sponsors to come back here for the baptism. We've got a baptismal font. When you serve a couple churches through it, you remember they do baptisms at different parts of the service. <laughs> so you kind of get used to it. I like it at the beginning. Um, but we're going to do this right now back here. So come on back and meet you back here. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. As you bring Lana to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities. Do you parents promise to help Lana grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, we do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Lana in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit? and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and communion with the church? If so, say, we do, we do. People of God, do you promise to support Lana and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, respond, we do. We do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess to the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. You renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God and the ways of sin that draw you from God, if so, respond with, we renounce them. For the whole congregation and everybody. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing the song. you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you we give our honor and our praise. Amen. Amen. All right. Bring it on over here. Lana Lane. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. A little more water than usual there. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you were baptized. All right, let us pray together. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. 
Sustain Lana Lane with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good work and glorify your God in heaven. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Kennedy and Adam. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Strengthen them in their own baptism so they may share eternally the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us welcome Lana. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. We're going to see how this goes. <laughs> Let us welcome our new sister in Christ, Lana. She stopped crying. <laughs> Look at all those people. <laughs> she likes you guys. <laughs> all right. There we go. All right. Yeah, God bless you. you know, peace. All right. Peace now. God bless. Thank you. God bless. All right, you guys. One more. Okay. So now here we are. Okay. So what's next on the slides? <laughs> we'll start. We'll continue with the prayers of the day. There we go. Um, statement of faith. We could do that, though, if it's still there. It's in the bulletin, too. So uh, we'll, do, we'll, we'll confess our faith. In the words of the, apost uh, the statement of faith. We haven't said it yet, have we? Not really. It was kind of the baptism. It kind of was in there. So let's read the words. We believe in God, the creator spirit, who moved upon the face of the deep at the beginning of creation, who created all that is, and who spoke through the prophets of old. We believe in Jesus Christ, in whom God's spirit was poured in fullness and in power, that the whole creation might be restored and unified, and who promised that the Spirit would come and fill the faithful with power to witness to the mighty love of God. We wait on that Spirit today with longing hearts, seeking to be empowered to witness to God's love in Christ with fresh words and courageous actions of love and hope. Glory be to God, Creator Christ, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Usually we'll have one statement of faith, but it was different enough. Yeah. Why not today? We continue with the prayers of the people. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. O one God, triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, giver of life, you established peace through your Son and gave your church the hope of sharing in your glory. Enliven us by your Spirit to speak and act in love for the sake of the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creator of all, you rejoice in creation and have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hands. Instill in everyone your spirit of care for the earth, especially in areas threatened by ecological devastation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Redeemer, you delight in the human race. Move the hearts of the world leaders to seek wisdom, speak truth, and care for all endangered by poverty, prejudice, or violence. Further the work of international collaboration 
and peacemaking. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding comforter, you call out all who live, restore severed relationships, and protect children who lack trustworthy caregivers. Grant hope to those who are experiencing fear, pain, or grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy three, you are community and you create community. Build up ministries that support those who are isolated or lonely. Give endurance as we nurture vital relationships in our congregation and beyond. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, as we remember your saints for their strong faith and witness, even unto death. Console grieving families. Stir up in us the resolve to pursue the courageous paths of justice. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts in your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with those around us. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Jesus, you are the bread of life, bread broken to mend all broken dreams, broken people, broken homes, and broken hearts. Break the good news lovingly to all struggling spirits that you are nourishment to anyone who hungers for life. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite our servers to come up and as we uh, prepare for communion and we invite you to take a cup as you come forward and the wine will be poured or grape juice if you request it. We have gluten-free, corn-free wafers also available for those requests. The table is ready. Come and eat.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We come again to you, God, giving you thanks that in this feast of mercy you have embraced and healed heal us, making us one in the body of Christ. Go with us on our way. Equip us for every good work that we may continue to give you thanks by embracing others with mercy and healing. Amen. When we sing the benediction. Stay standing for our sending song.